is Leslie and today I'd like to review Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And let me start off by saying that I actually like the book cover better without the dust jacket on it. I just love this golden moth on it. I'll admit that I was really nervous in picking up this book because it is so hyped on booktube and I generally tend to lean towards the most unpopular opinions but trust me, I was surprised myself. This book is so good and actually does live up to the hype. If not for the cool plot and interesting concepts, for the beautiful writing that is Lainey Taylor's style. The plot follows Laszlo Strange, who was a war orphan, who was raised by monks and who is now a librarian. And he is completely obsessed with figuring out what happened to the lost city of Weep. Only Weep is not its actual name. No one seems to remember anything about the city, not its real name, not its location, and it's almost like everything was erased from everybody's memory by magic. But he was told stories of it by an old monk, and even though no one believes him, he knows that these stories have to be true. Then one day, a war hero from the city of Weeb comes to town to gather a delegation of extraordinary men and women in the hopes that one of them will be able to deliver the lost city of Weep from its past and its shadow. And of course, Laszlo gets to be one of them. So I read the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy last year, and although there were concepts in that series that made me very uncomfortable, I was once again reminded how much I love Lainey Taylor's beautiful poetic writing. You know that I don't enjoy long, overdrawn descriptions, but Lainey Taylor has a crazy way of making super wordy descriptions be enjoyable. She has once again delivered one of the most vivid setting and story I've ever read. The world building and the imagery was just so unbelievably well done. I had never read a book where half of the story takes place in dreams and I thought that was a really neat concept and being able to envision and imagine what the characters were able to do in those dreams was awesome and that was all due to the amazing writing. I found that this book had some very dark concepts and it revolves around gods being monsters and humans doing shameful, unspeakable things and becoming monsters themselves for the greater good of our species. The focus of the story is on vengeance and destruction and hate but also on hope, love, and forgiveness. I loved all the characters very much. I thought they were all very well developed. I really enjoyed seeing and understanding each side's motives. Understanding why the villains feel the way they do was pretty neat. The impasse that the characters find themselves in was very relatable, and I really enjoy books that make me question myself. What would I do if I were in their position? I'm not so sure I'd be one of the good guys. The plot was rather on the slow side, which was not an issue, surprisingly, but again, that is because of the beautiful writing style. But I would have liked to see more important details into the story a lot sooner, because midway through the book, nothing of importance had yet happened, and I'm always really disappointed when that happens. I was warned that this book was sad, but I didn't feel sad at all. The only sad part is in the last 20 pages when one of the main characters dies, but she dies in the prologue. You, the very first page you read is her death, so how could you be surprised by it? So one of my critiques is that I would have liked to be a little more impacted by it. I would have liked to shed a tear. When everything else in this book is super descriptive, I felt like this death scene was written way too fast. There is no doubt in my mind that I am a Lainey Taylor fan, but although this book was beautifully written, I felt the descriptions were fillers to just get to a bigger page count. Also, and this is very much Lainey Taylor's style, but I would have liked to see more dialogue and less narration. This book was mostly descriptions, narration, and inner dialogue, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I like an equal balance of descriptions, but dialogue between characters, characters interacting with each other. I thought the ending was great and I really enjoyed the cliffhanger we left off. I hope this review didn't make this book sound average at all because trust me, it is 
far better than average. That's why I rated it a four and I've pre-ordered Muse of Nightmares and I can't wait to read the second novel. So this is it for my review of Strange the Dreamer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye!